what's up? I'm Mark Morton. I play guitar for the band Lamb of God. And thanks for watching my episode of Riff Lords. Today we're going to check out some of our riffs. I'm going to show you how to play some of it. And hopefully you can walk away from this with maybe some ideas for your own songwriting or some techniques for your own playing. All of these songs are in drop D standard, which is tuning your guitar to regular standard A440 tuning, and then dropping the top string a whole step to D so that it makes an open chord str strumming in the top string three strings. The first song we're gonna check out is a song called Memento Mori. It's off of our self-titled album that was released a few years ago. Um, and my memory of this song is that I had had this riff laying around for quite some time. In fact, I presented it for the album before, the one that it appeared on, and I brought it to our other guitar player, Willie, and to our producer, Josh Wilbur. And I've got this riff, and I've got these couple riffs that go together. And they really weren't that intrigued by it. And they, they just kind of passed it over. And so it sort of went away and it lay dormant in my collection of riffs and song ideas until we came up to do the self-titled album. And we were in our pre-production -pre sessions for that and doing working on demos. And I said, guys, you guys are sleeping on this riff. This is like a really, really cool riff. And I need you to listen to this again. And I played it for them and I played the little demo I put together. And they were both like, we passed on that? Like, we didn't want to work on that? That's crazy. Let's go. And then we wrote the song in like two days. Okay, so here's the first, the kind of main riff to Memento Mori at full speed. Okay, so that was full speed. So now I'm going to slow it down just a little bit so you can maybe see a little more clear what's going on. So this riff uh, in Memento Mori is, 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 I picked it because it really does represent a lot of the guitar style that we use in Lamb of God. It's very groove oriented and usually for my part, um, and I think for my partner Willie's part too, a lot of times that's one of the, the main things we consider is just does it have groove? Does it kind of make you want to, you know, have that reaction to the riff? Um, and this one does for me. A lot of times we will use... Uh, the top string and single note a riff when when we could play full chords in the riff we will sometimes choose to play it on a single note just because of the sound of it really and the way that one string resonates um so a lot of times you'll see us using one string where other players might use a power chord and i think that's something that's just kind of stylistically specific to what we do so breaking down the riff it's really a series of pull-offs um, and kind of hammered licks scattered in between droning on the top string, which in this case is a D. We're tuned to drop D in standard tuning. So the first thing you do is pull off of the fourth fret uh, and then move up to the 10th position and it's like this. <laughs> So that's alternating your pull-offs from the fourth fret to the first fret to the third fret. So rhythmically the same, but kind of dancing around those positions here and then doing a, a, a different sort of counterbalance up here in the 10th position. And that's sort of the, the call and response of the riff. So after the call and response kind of droning situation you have there on the top string, the riff closes, the cycle of the riff closes with a very sort of legato kind of roll down in the first position, and it goes like this. So the rolling section of that riff at the end of this passage starts on the fifth string, and it does a hammer on and pull off on the first fret there. And then it goes to the third fret on the top string, which in this case is a drop D, and kind of cycles down to the first fret open and then builds back up. So that goes like this. <laughs> So all throughout this riff, uh, the picking pattern is pretty much just an alternate picking on the top string. And that is one thing I've sort of developed over the years of playing is, you know, it's metal. So there's a lot of triplets. There's a lot of really rhythmic right-handed stuff. 
And I think for me in learning the alternate picking, practicing alternate picking, I spent a lot of time focusing to get my upstroke with my pick sort of the same kind of velocity and the same sort of hit as my downstroke. So people talk a lot about downstroking, which is, you know, but you can also practice upstroking. And then so when you put them together and you can alternate pick, you have a really even sort of power with your right picking hand, like a... So that sort of, um, you know, balancing your upstroke and your downstroke, I think has I, something I've found that's helped me um, navigate tricky rhythm patterns. All right, so now you've got the parts. Those are all how all the parts go together. So I'll play it again slow so you can kind of assemble everything and see how it goes, and then we'll bring it back up full speed so you see where everything sits. <laughs> Okay, so now you got the parts, now you seem slow, so we're back kind of full speed, um, and we're playing it like this. All right, so the next song we're going to do is a song called Ruin uh, that uh, appears on our As the Palaces Burn album that came out sometime in the early 2000s. And uh, this is a song that is still very much in our live set. We still play it all the time. It's a cool song because the first riff that I'll show you is if if you're new to guitar or you know, you're just picking it up and your skill level is early in, this is a really good song that you can play along with, help you work on your rhythm, your timing, and it's not super difficult to play. And I'll play a couple riffs from it. Um, they get a little more uh tricky as each with each successive riff um but it's a good starting place for you if you're trying to learn some lamb of god songs okay so i'm gonna make a pass at all three intro riffs of the song in a row and then i'll break each one down slowly for you so you can check them out and play along <laughs> All right, so here's all that slowed down quite a bit. Okay, so let's break some of that down for you. Um, the first riff is the easy riff. So if you're new or if you're just learning to play, this is a great Lamb of God riff that you can learn uh, pretty easily. Again, we're in drop D, standard tuning. And the first riff is really just kind of chunking on the open D that is formed out of the top two strings and then bouncing on that a power chord on the fifth fret and the sixth fret. And it goes like this. Mm -hmm. 
So that's one, two, three open, and then fifth fret, and then an open in between it, and then the sixth fret, and you just kind of cycle that, repeat it. The feel for this riff too is uh, it's kind of counted in threes and fours at the same time, and that's something actually that Lamb of God does uh, frequently, and it's just kind of a groove that we seem to lock into. So it's uh, the riff you can count in threes and fours. So it's one two three one two three one two three one two three or one two three four, and they happen simultaneously. So you can see. <laughs> One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. Okay, so the second riff of Ruin gets a little bit trickier, not so much with the left hand, but with the right hand. So we started incorporating some triplets into that. So for this riff, uh, you'll need to stretch a little bit too. It's a good stretch for your left hand. So we'll move to the second position. So second fret on the top string. Still, uh, this one, the first one was chords. This one now we're going to single string on top. So it goes uh, from the second fret to the fifth fret to the sixth fret to the first fret. So the tricky part uh, for that second riff uh, on the right hand is incorporating the triplets, which is really a great exercise for your right hand accuracy and your timing and just playing with different patterns. And this one, um, so there are triplets. It's not super crazy, so it's actually a really good exercise. It's a single strike and then a triplet. I don't really know. I just kind of play it, but I'll play it real slow and you can figure out what it is because I just kind of play it now. <laughs> Okay, so after that second riff, it goes back to the first riff for a cycle. So we don't need to do that again because you already know it. And then um, it gets to the last riff of the intro to Ruin. Uh, and I'll play that slow for you. Okay, so this third riff, um, it starts the same every time, and that is with a kind of a hammer-on at the 12th and 13th fret, so it's... So there's your triplet there at the end of that little passage, so... And then the lick on the end of the first half is... Okay, so the elements of that riff are... Um, basically bouncing off the 12th and 13th fret there. Still, again, top string, just that um, string by itself for clarity. And you can kind of play, too, with muting. Uh, I do stuff intuitively when I'm playing with palm muting just to give things more of a mass. Not really technical things that I can, like, dial in specifically for you. It's more of a feel thing um, that as I think you watch me play some of this riffs, you'll see my hand moving around just to sort of dampen strings in different parts. Um, so you can play with that to see what's comfortable for you or what sounds good to you and your version of playing these things. Um, so the uh, the elements of that riff are the... And then that repeats. And then the little run on the first half is... Which is the same pattern, just moving in two different positions. Then back to the... And then another run which is like this. And then all of that repeats. Um, and then the last little tag, as we call it, which is just a, its own lick there at the end, is kind of a rolling uh, lick around the third, sixth, and fifth fret, which is... And so the way the that riff ends is kind of a sliding, rolling sort of feel around the third, sixth, fifth, Back to the third, back up to the fifth. I don't have these things dialed in. I just play them, but I'll show it to you. It goes like this. Okay, so now you've seen all the parts and pieces to Ruin. So I'm going to play it again, slow speed, everything put back together so you can follow along. Okay. 
Back to full speed. Here we go. This is Ruin. So the next song we're going to do is a song called Lay to Rest. This has been a very big song for the band. It's a staple in our live show. An interesting thing about the song is that when we wrote it years ago, I kind of brought in the main riffs for the song, and I had this riff bouncing around in my head that I was really excited to incorporate into a you know, new batch of songs we were writing. And we worked the whole thing out, and we all loved the song. And then at some point, and I don't remember exactly when it was, certainly after, thankfully, after we had recorded and released the song, I realized that I had written uh, a song that sounds quite a bit like a Testament song called Into the Pit. Uh, Testament were one of my favorite bands uh, as I was growing up and learning to play guitar and playing in my first bands. Uh, so it stands to reason it makes sense that I would reference a Testament riff. They are some of the greatest riff writers in the genre and were a huge influence on me and the rest of my band. Um, so I like to think of Laid to Rest as a little bit of a tribute to the great riffs of the Bay Area thrash scene and Testament. Um, and we've toured with those guys many times, and I have often told Eric Peterson that I should probably buy him dinner every time we play this song. Okay, so here's the main intro riff for Laid to Rest. Okay, so that was the Laid to Rest riff at full speed, and now I'm going to slow it down for you. Okay, so the, the structure... The sort of idea behind this riff um, is again kind of kind of something that comes up a lot in in Lamb of God music and Lamb of God riffs. It's sort of a call and response within the riff uh, with drone rhythmic chugging patterns in between. It's also um, as we talked about earlier in that kind of twelve eight feel where you can count it as triplets or count through it as four. So da 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 da. Da, 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 da. It starts out with a slide into three hits on the top string and then a descending little run on the sixth, fifth, and third fret of the A string. So, and then a response to that. So then the triplet on the, the pattern on the top is the same and 
another stab up the neck. So. <laughs> a longer pattern on the top string and then a run so after the call and responses on the a string it stretches out a little bit for the end of the first half of the riff and it's um again starting with the triplet open notes and then kind of a longer run all on the top string from that longer run on the top string we start the second half of the riff again with three rhythmic hits on the top string and then kind of a trill pull off and a descending pattern on the D string. And I'll play those a little bit slow for you. And then the riff finishes with a descending kind of scale run here in the third position. I think it's harmonic minor, something like that. Uh, and that goes like this. I'll do that run a little bit slower. Okay, so now I'll put all that together, uh, sort of half speed, a little bit slowed down. And now one more time, full speed. Okay, so the next riff we're going to check out is the second riff in a song called Now You've Got Something to Die For. It's a super fun riff to play. Uh, it's fast and it's tricky, but once you get the pattern locked in, it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, this riff, I don't think it's really been necessarily, it's, it's not the most immediate to recognize, but this riff is sort of my ode to Dimebag Daryl um, and Pantera. It taken, especially taken by itself out of the context of the song, I think you'll hear that influence. And Dime was such a phenomenal player and such a really big influence on me uh, as a riff writer, as a guitar player, and just his sense of groove, um, incorporating that real kind of swing and groove with still a really heavy riff in a, in a heavy song uh, was just everything to me and a lot of other players. So I've definitely uh, referenced him or tried to reference him in, in some of our own riffs. This is the second riff of Now You've Got Something to Die For played at full speed. Okay, so here's that second riff uh, from Now You've Got Something to Die For slowed down quite a bit. Cool. So this one's very sort of chromatic oriented. It's a little chaotic in the note choice. So uh, I'll just take it piece by piece and then you can put it all together. So the first section slow is like this. Uh, all right. So I'll call out the frets for you. Uh, it's pretty chaotic in there. So let me help you make some sort of sense of it. So it starts out second fret, first fret on the top string. And then it goes second fret on the A string to the third fret on the top string and then first fret on the A string back to the third fret on the top string, I think. And so it should sound like this. So I think the, the, the element of kind of chromatic note choice uh, in this riff just makes it feel really frenetic and, and chaotic. Um, the notes bouncing around, but the tones being so similar, but you can still tell they're moving around and moving around in a very rhythmic sense. I think it has a very, you know, we talked about Pantera earlier, and I think it has a very Cowboys from Hell kind of feel. And so I think the the chromatic note choice and just the chaos of all that sort of encapsulated into a very rhythmic kind of bouncing, aggressive riff uh, makes for a, a cool groove, a cool dynamic. Okay, so we got through the first little section, which is... And then we stay in that second position for which is second fret, first fret, back to second fret, up to third fret. So, and then a very similar riff, except exchange an open note for that first fret. So, so that whole section is. Okay, starting the second section of that riff slow, again, still on the 
second fret to first fret, and then we're going to slide up uh, and change the riff a little bit up in the fifth position. So that'll go. And that's two, one, then fifth fret on the A string to the sixth fret on the top string. And then all of that ends with uh, a little kind of gliss lick, uh, again, second position, up to the fourth and fifth fret, and then down to the first fret. So this is heavy metal, right? So it's, uh, you know, by nature, the guitar playing in metal is a little more featured maybe than some other kinds of music. It's a little more acrobatic. Um, it's a little more percussive. It's all those things together. So I think any of those skills on your right hand in terms of your rhythmic stuff on your right hand, the upstrokes, the triplets, and then also um, developing your fourth finger to not only fret notes, but slide around and move around and do some of the long stretches that we've already done here um, are just adding to your arsenal. I was really lazy in developing my fourth finger. I used to play for a very long time with these three fingers. And then I realized you're denying yourself 25% of your left hand capacity if you're not get, getting your fourth finger as strong as your first, second, and third, which is still a constant battle. So um, this riff is probably a good exercise um, for that dexterity in really all of your fingers. Okay, so we've gotten all the parts. Hopefully we've put them together. And I'm gonna run through two cycles of the riff at slow speed. And that sounds like this. Okay, and here is all of that insanity put together at full speed. So the next riff we're going to break down is just the very intro, very first riff when Vigil, the song Vigil kicks in. This song for me, uh, this riff in particular for me, first of all, it's really, really, really easy. So anyone that's watching this that has just started playing guitar and is looking for simple riffs to learn and work on your technique, this riff is super simple. It requires a little bit of stretching with the left hand, and that's a good exercise, but it's super heavy and very, very easy to play, as you will see. For me, this riff references Black Sabbath and Tony Iommi and the simplicity with which Tony Iommi and Black Sabbath made really, really scary, ominous riffs that weren't particularly super hard to play. Um, and I think sometimes those simple riffs that really break things down to the essence, the most simple version of the progression, um, they can really sometimes be the most powerful. Okay, so here is the first heavy opening riff um, to the song Vigil. <laughs> Okay, well, now I'm going to slow that riff down for you. I don't know if that's necessary, but I'm going to do my best to play it even slower than slow. Um, and it, that sounds like this. So what's going on in that riff is really just this kind of interval um, between the notes and moving that chromatically down the fret it sounds super scary. And um, that's the stretch from the eighth fret to the third fret, and then from the seventh fret to the second fret, and then from the sixth fret to the first fret, and then I think from the fifth fret to the first fret again and open, so. So in the first couple passes of that, you will notice that I played it on the single top string and letting that string resonate 
And then as the riff progresses, uh, I start incorporating the A string as well to sort of power chord it out and kind of just intermittently palm muting there. You can, uh, again, this is a great song for beginners. So I'll just like go into the fact that you can palm mute by taking the back of your hand and resting it right along your bridge where the strings meet the bridge. And it's the difference between and so, you know, very much the same way you would use your foot to dampen a piano. Uh, you can use your right hand up and down on the bridge to kind of dampen and change the inflection and change um, the feel of the riff. And so Vigil is doing that as well with those chords there at the end. I think intuitively as I'm playing this riff, um, I incorporate vibrato. Um, again, since we're focusing on beginners here, vibrato is just kind of wiggling the string on the fret to give a, a, a vibrato effect. So it's the difference between and. So I don't really have necessarily a dialed in spot or reason or way I do that. For me, uh, it's just kind of a feel thing. So probably depending on the night, my vibrato might be extreme and wild or sometimes a little more subtle. Um, and that's the great thing about vibrato. It's a great thing about guitar really is it's very expressive and those little details and those little nuances are the ways that you can play a song every night and play it differently every night, just sort of expressively and how you're feeling or what the vibe of the show is. Um, so visual, a lot of vibrato there on that heavy top string. Okay, so I'll run through that simple beginning riff for Vigil again, slow, slower than usual. And you can maybe check out the vibrato and palm muting and the, the juxtaposition of the open note version and the corded version. So the next riff we're going to do is Redneck. Redneck is one of the more popular Lamb of God songs. It's usually the the last song we play in the set. I've played this song so many, so many times. I've Who knows how many times I've played this song. Uh, I love playing this song. It's always a great crowd reaction. It's a super groovy riff. Um, it's fun to play, and it really gets kind of a visceral reaction from the crowd. A lot of times, a lot of bouncing and jumping going on. Uh, when you play these songs night after night uh, so much, sometimes they get so ingrained in you that you sort of do it. It's not that you're not paying attention. It's just that you're, it's, it's such a part of you that you're not really thinking about playing it. And recently, we were in Belgium opening for metal legends, Titans, um, Judas Priest. It was a great show, really big show. And uh, we're ending our set about to, you know, last song we're going to play. And then Judas Priest is coming on and our singer, Randy is out there saying thank yous and saying the good nights and all that. And all of a sudden I realized I have no idea. I know how the riff goes, but I can't remember if it repeats the first half twice or if I play the riff all the way through for the intro of the song. And I'm sitting there and I start having a mini panic attack in my head and I couldn't figure it out. So I asked my tech, Alan Sosa, I said, hey, does Redneck do the first half twice or does it go all the way through? And he's like, looked at me and his eyes got real big. He's like, I don't know. I can't remember because he was on the spot. I walked up to our drum riser and to our drummer, I said, hey, does Redneck go halfway through or does it go all the way? And his eyes got really big. So I went back to our little guitar workstation and I had my tech Google it on his phone and we listened to it in my ear. 20 seconds before I walked out in front of uh, 20,000 people and played the riff. So uh, there's a fun story about Redneck and how I learned it seconds before I played it at a big festival. And now I'm going to show it to you. So after some investigation and making sure we're doing this right, this is the riff for Redneck after the band comes in. This is the full pass of all the sections of the main riff for Redneck at full speed. It goes like this. <laughs> All right. 
right, so here's that redneck riff slowed down. <laughs> All right, so I'll break down the riff. Um, once again, a lot of single note top string stuff. It starts with a pull off from the third fret to the open and then kind of a trill from the 10th and 12th fret back to the 10th. Then you bounce a little descending lick from the third to the first to open to the fifth to the sixth. Then again, just like you started. Now kind of a cool chromatic kind of strut thing here. Where the riff sort of slows down in the middle and I think that's part of what gives it that attitude. Ending that section with a chord, a C chord on the fifth uh, string and the fourth string. So that has us here. Then it starts again, just like you started. I'll walk down, which is seven, six, six, five, five, three. And then the sort of finale lick. Very Cowboys from Hell, Pantera kind of feel there. Open three. Open three, five, six. Then three, five, six, seven. And then third fret, fifth string to seven, six, five on the top. So then seven, six, five, three, ending with the chord. Uh, this song again is another one where you can really be expressive, really be wild and have all the feels with your vibrato here, particularly when you land on that 10th fret um, in the sort of beginning of the riff. Okay, so now we've dissected the redneck and we're going to put it back together uh, at a bit of a slower speed. Okay, and now we're back to full speed for Redneck. All right, well, thanks for checking out my episode of Riff Lords. I had a lot of fun playing these riffs for you, breaking them down, and hopefully... You found something in the batch that you can incorporate into your own playing, into your own songwriting, into your own riff technique. Um, I think that we are all really, really lucky to have music and have guitar in our lives, whether you do it at the biggest levels or whether you do it just for fun. Ultimately, um, we all have that place to go to exercise our creative mind and to get the joy out of the instrument that I think we all get. If you're watching this, I'm sure you get it just like I do. So uh, enjoy the riffs. I enjoyed playing them for you. Thanks. 